Good morning. I am sorry. I'm late. Nothing this morning was quite in the right place and I'd forgotten that. Oh, there we go. Good morning. I hope you are all well. You haven't given up on me given it's five past ten. Perfectly possible if you have. Um, hopefully you might come back later. If not, um, don't worry about it. We'll try and always be here on a on a Monday. Oh, Nick, you're still there. Good, excellent, fantastic. Right, we are. What did I just say? Psalm fifty-seven. Is that right? Yes. There we go. Fifty-seven. I'm on Corinthians twelve, twelve to the end for the readings this morning. morning morning and morning Barbara excellent thank you for looking uh, looking after people yesterday Barbara much appreciated right let's get rid of that <coughs> Ooh, no, I shall need this so I am not going to use my own reflections this morning because I think somebody else's have felt better than mine basically the um, uh, Reflections on Daily Prayer app uh, that the Church of England produces um, is for this sequence being written by Helen Ann Hartley who I can't remember where she's Bishop of now because she's moved um, <laughs> um, but um, although I've not met her she had strong connections to um, Cuddersman where she trained part time like I did and then she spent her time being a bishop in New Zealand and then came back again. So there you go. Um, and I like what she says this morning about 1 Corinthians 12. So I am going to share her reflections. And if you want to do this every day, I do encourage you to use the Church of England a website. And if you have a an app-based um, bit of tech, then... Um, the reflections are really helpful. Um, it's a separate app, so that might might be something of interest. Right, let's take a moment of quiet. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall declare your praise. Your light springs up for the righteous, and all the peoples have seen your glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God, King of the nations. To you be praise and glory for ever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praise in all the earth blessed be god father son and holy spirit blessed be god forever amen the night has passed and the day lies open before us let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. So Psalm 57 Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for my soul takes refuge in you. In the shadow of your wings will I take refuge, until the storm of destruction has passed by. I will call upon the Most High God, the God who fulfils his purpose for me. He will send from heaven and save me and rebuke those who would trample upon me. God will send forth his love 
and his faithfulness. I lie in the midst of lions, people whose teeth are spears and arrows and their tongue a sharp sword. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens and your glory over all the earth. They have laid a net for my feet and my soul is pressed down. They have dug a pit before me and will fall into it themselves. My heart is ready, O God, my heart is ready. I will sing and give you praise. Awake, my soul, awake, harp and lyre, that I may awaken the dawn. I will give you thanks, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praise to you among the nations. For your loving kindness is as high as the heavens and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens and your glory over all the earth. Let's pray. Tender God, gentle protector in time of trouble, pierce the gloom of of despair and give us with all your people the song of freedom and the shout of praise in Jesus Christ our Lord Amen <coughs> and so I'm turning to 1 Corinthians 12 12 to the end um, I might have to move the tripod that holds things up because the reading sort of tucked behind it slightly at the end. It's quite a long reading and it's also a bit of a tongue twister. So let's see how we go. For just as the body is one and has many members and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptised into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. And we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot were to say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear were to say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members of the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that come, that seem to be weaker, are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honourable, we clothe with greater honour and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect, whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honour to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honoured, all rejoice together with it. Now, you are the body of Christ and individual members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? All teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts, and I will show you 
a still more excellent way. <clears throat> that last bit um, it reminds me of a, a certain well-known cult, cult film. Um, be excellent with one another. Um, anyway, so what does Helen Ann Hartley have to say? <coughs> in, in this passage, Paul builds on the image of the body and its many parts with humour. He does indeed. As he imagines the eye speaking to the hand and so on. Whilst there is a list and the apostles come first and the interpretation of tongues comes last. What matters is that all work together. Only when that happens will God's purposes be brought to fruition. This serves an important lesson to the Corinthian community as much as it does for us today. How can I seek, or oh, how can I seek, to ensure that all are included and valued in the working out of God's mission? wonder how much we feel included and valued by our church fellowship. It was something I was challenged about after service yesterday. The use, <coughs> excuse me, the use of the image of the body to illustrate common life together was one that was fairly common in Paul's day. What is especially significant and even subversive is that Paul uses it both to celebrate diversity and crucially to ensure that one part is not seen as superior over another. And I find that interesting given that Paul has a fairly bad press, certainly when I was growing up, over things like the inclusion of women in ministry, um, which was always twisted beyond belief. But this this idea that actually Paul is celebrating diversity and um, making sure that one part does not feel superior over another um, feels quite significant. Paul's breaking down of the barriers of status go to the heart of the gospel that is good news for all. It's hard to overestimate the challenge this would have presented to the diverse Corinthian community, <coughs> which consisted of different groups who had come together in a common identity in Christ. And that's true of the church today, really, isn't it? You know, we, we are a fairly diverse bunch, um, not least in uh, our theological convictions and our our understanding of the Bible and the way we understand the Bible, the actual means we use to actually get to our understanding of the Bible. Um, and actually we need to remember that we uh, come together as a common identity, with a common identity in Christ. Reading this passage with its playful humour and provocation it's hard not to sense the resonances with many Christian communities today and the dangers of simply being with people whom we perceive to be most like us. That's the challenge, isn't it? It's very easy to stay with the people you uh, feel at home with, feel safe with, etc. And actually that's not necessarily uh, what God wants of us, at least not all of the time. So, it's quite a lot to think about in that very familiar passage. Oh, I'm going to cough again. Tickle. <coughs> right. I'm going to say the Benedictus, but I'm going to grab a drink first. Hold hard, folks. <coughs> oh, the 
joys of hangovers from COVID. Right. The Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. <coughs> <coughs> Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high <coughs> shall break upon us to shine on those <coughs> who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace glory to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning and is now and shall be forever amen Sorry, this happens about twice a day at the moment. <coughs> and it's really irritating when the timing's lousy. I'm going to cut my losses and I'm going to pray the collect and the Lord's Prayer. And I know that you are all more than capable of uh, praying intercessory prayer yourselves. So I shall leave you to do that in a bit on your own. God our Creator, who in the beginning commanded the light to shine out of darkness, we pray that the light of the glorious gospel of Christ may dispel the darkness of ignorance and unbelief, shine into the hearts of all your people, and reveal the knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and for ever. Amen. And the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May Christ, who sends us to the nations, give us the power of his Spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Sorry about the croak this morning, folks. I'm sure you can continue in prayer at home and uh, go well and God bless. <laughs>